Welcome back to The Distressed Princess, I'm Rhonda. In today's video, I'm playing with milk paint, and here are all the things that I was able to create using this fabulous product. Links will be in my description box so you can try this paint too. The brand of milk paint is called Homestead House, and it is the makers of Fusion Mineral Paint, which you know that I love. So if you take a look on their website, you can see all the different colors that you can get in the milk paint variety. And you can also see all the chippy goodness that you can get using this brand of paint. And the great news is it's inexpensive to try. You can get a bag of this milk paint for only $6.99 and just watch what all you can do. So I went to my stash of goodies from the Goodwill to see what all I had that I could paint on and I ran across this piece of art that originally cost me $4 and some change and it was a TJ Maxx piece but look how old this TJ Maxx label is. This is an old, old thing. Anyway, I thought it would be the perfect thing to play with the milk paint with. First, I gave it a base coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle. Now, if I would have had a darker color fusion mineral paint, I would have used that for my base color, but I don't have a darker color yet, but it's in the works. So I'm gonna set that off to dry and mix up the milk paint. So if you're new to milk paint like I am, it comes in a bag and it's a powder. You have to mix it one part powder to one part water. I'm using this old plastic measuring spoon and I thought I would try to mix up just a little bit to start. I didn't want to mix up a whole bunch because I just wanted to really do enough to do this one piece for right now. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how far this gets me. I'm actually going to mix up two of these spoons, which is a half tablespoon. So one tablespoon of powder and then I will put in two of these spoonfuls of water. So that's one part powder to one part water again and you're supposed to mix it up. And the instructions say after you mix it up the first time, set it aside and set for about 10 minutes and then right before you use it, mix it up again. So after 10 minutes, my base color chalk paint was dry on the piece of wood and now I'm going to mix up the milk paint again following the instructions and we'll begin painting. So the first thing you'll notice, or the first thing I noticed about this milk paint is that it is a more watery consistency than what I'm used to because I'm used to using chalk paint and the Fusion Mineral paint and uh, it's, it's just, you know, got a watery consistency. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just gonna take a couple of coats, I think, to get the coverage that we want. So here's the first coat and I'm drying it up with my hair dryer. I wasn't sure what to expect as far as crackling and getting the chippiness because I know that that's what milk paint is really supposed to do. But on the first coat, I really wasn't getting much crackling or chipping. And so then I began to paint my second coat. And just like the Fusion Mineral paint, the second coat of this milk paint looks a lot better. So don't stress if your first coat is transparent and blotchy like this. The second coat is gonna fix all that. Now here I go with drying up the second coat. And this is where you're gonna get your crackles and your chippiness. And I really think that it is how hot your uh, heat tool is that is going to determine how much chippiness you have. Also, it might have something to do with how thick you apply the paint. I think the thicker areas, the places that have more paint is gonna chip more than the thinner areas. So I didn't even realize that my um, hair dryer was only on medium heat. This is not on the highest, hottest setting. I think I would have gotten more chippiness and crackles if it had been on the hottest setting. But this way you'll get to see all the various different kinds of chipping and crackling that you can get with this paint and you can play around and see what you get for yourself. Now before I show you how I finished off the first project, I want to let you know that I still had paint left. Now that was only one tablespoon's worth of powder out of that bag and I still needed more things to paint because I didn't want it to go to waste. So. I found this finial piece that I got at the Goodwill for a couple bucks and I'm going to paint that up. 
And for reference, this is not real wood. I think it's actually some sort of resin or plastic stuff, but it went on okay and it's drying up just fine and it's not really chipping and cracking yet, but oh my gosh, just wait. This might actually be my favorite piece of the day. So here I am putting on the second coat of milk paint and once I apply the heat on this one, and mind you, I realized that my hair dryer was not on its hottest setting, so I remedied that and I put it on its highest, hottest heat setting. And then when I applied the heat, this thing turned magical. Right before my eyes, that paint started drying up and looking so old. Like this was just the oldest old piece that you found in a barn that was chipping up its paint and I I used my fingernail just to scratch some of it away and it looks so stinking authentic that this is what made me fall in love with this brand of milk paint. It is hands down the prettiest and easiest distressing I have ever done. So call the distressed princess impressed. <laughs> So take a look at this guys. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. It's just going to be a knickknack I think. But I am so in love with the look of this chippiness on this finial. Now the best thing to do once you have your chips the way you want it to be then you want to seal it with something so that it will stop chipping and it won't flake off anymore. Now before we get back to the first project, I still had paint to use up. So still, this is just one tablespoon of powder out of the package. And now I'm still looking for things to paint so I don't waste it. So I had these pieces that are from a salvage store that I was at not too long ago. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with them, so they've just kind of been sitting waiting for me to do something. So I decided I would layer up some Fusion Mineral paint on these. So I'm gonna start with some white picket fence mineral paint, and then I'm gonna add the green color uh, milk paint on top. Now I didn't wanna cover up all of the dark color that these originally were, so I'm being very sporadic and splotchy with my painting and not trying to cover up every little nook and cranny, and I'm letting some of the dark color show through. And after the white color was dry, then I applied my milk paint. And so I kinda was doing the same thing, not trying to completely cover up the white or the dark, just adding some more splotches of green. So it's mostly gonna be green, but it's gonna look like the green has chipped up and you can see the white and the dark color underneath. Now when I applied my heat to this metal piece, it didn't really chip up like it did on the last resin piece or on the wood, but it just kinda, maybe the metal heats up too hot too fast, I don't know. But it didn't get the chippiness like the other pieces got, but it was easy to distress back and I just used the first thing that I had next to me, which happened to be a plastic ruler. I just used that to scratch some of it back off and darned if it doesn't look pretty authentic. So I finished up the other two pieces and finally that was all of my green milk paint. Finally used up. Now let's go back to the first DIY and what did I do to finish it up? I had purchased these metal tins from Timu and I will look up the exact price of them. They were about $5 a piece I want to say. And I think they're about 11 inches by seven inches, something like that, 11 by seven. And I thought they might be the perfect thing to go with these distressed, vintagey looking, chippy milk paint projects. 
And yes, look how precious, guys, with that green color. I loved it. So that hands down had to go on top of this wooden piece, but I wanted it to be able to hang on the wall. So before I attached this, then I flipped it over and I added a wire hanger to the back. And to attach the metal sign, I'm just gonna use some brass thumbtacks from the Dollar Tree. I think this makes the most cute farmhouse or cottage style kitchen decoration I might have ever made. But I had two of those signs from Timu and I wanted to make them a set. So I rummaged around and found this that I had gotten half price at the Dollar General store. So I originally had only paid $5 for it. And I wanted it to be a wall hanging instead of a tray. So I'm going to remove its handles. And since I want it to match my first one, well then I had to mix up a little bit more milk paint. And I really only wanted those side wooden pieces to be this green color and the middle to be white. So I was just going to use one spoonful of the powder and one spoonful of the water. I mixed it up and set it aside to wait for about 10 minutes like the package instructions. And while I was waiting, then I fixed up those wooden pieces where I removed the handles. Um, they kind of had some of that particle board, it's not real wood, kind of coming up where the screws came out. So I hammered those back down in and used some wood glue to fill the holes. Then I was going to paint the middle of the sign with my fusion mineral paint in the color Picket Fence. And I really was just needing to cover up those blue stripes. Even though I love green sack stripes, they were really cute. I really don't have a place in my house for this to match or to go. So I'm gonna turn it into something that I can use. And I also painted the back. I really wasn't concerned with covering up the relax part of the sign, so I didn't wanna waste my good paint on that. I really was just trying to cover up the blue stripes. After the white paint was dry, I used some masking tape to tape it off because I'm going to paint those wooden pieces with my green milk paint. If I were gonna do anything different with this milk paint, I should have used a more shallow container to mix it up in. Um, I used this tall uh, pasta sauce jar and uh, had kind of a hard time finding something long enough to get it stirred up. So take that into consideration when you're mixing up your own milk paint. That green color makes a beautiful rustic look on this wood. And on the second coat, it makes some pretty good chippy places. This all came together really quick and I'm all for a quick DIY, and especially with a payoff this stinking cute. So here's the strawberry sign from Timu. I'm gonna attach it the same way I did as the first one with some brass thumbtacks. And on the back of this one, I measured out the center of the back and I attached a sawtooth hanger.
Now I still had my metal scrolly pieces that I had painted green that I need to figure out what I wanted to do with. And I thought maybe one of them would be cute on a wire basket. This is one that I've got at the Dollar Tree. It originally was a brass color and I had painted it black. They actually sell them in black now. So you can start out with a black one if you like. Now I want it to be white, but I want it to be chippy white. So I want some of that black to show through. So I'm using my Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Picket Fence. And I'm just going to blotch and splotch that paint all over this wire basket and just make it look like the black is showing through and the white has chipped off. And then I just wrapped some jute string around the center of it and tied it to the front of the wire basket. I still have two of those scrolly pieces left that I don't know what I'm gonna do with. <laughs> Now let's take a look back at all our milk paint projects today. Time for a cute cat video. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to get some milk paint or fusion mineral paint, there are links in my description box for you to go and check that out. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye!